All right, guys, so the car has been driving. Uh, seems to be the motor is fine, uh, drives perfectly fine, shifts good, all that. But now what I want to do is I'm going to kind of take it back down and just go through a whole bunch of issues. So I thought everything was going to basically go pretty smoothly, but if you know cars, it never really does that. So long story short, we have an oil leak down in there. We got to figure out, and it's crazy because it was just freshly done. Um, I'm going to be putting on this new fuel pressure um, uh, gauge and basically on this Aeromotive one specifically it allows you to pop open this little pin that it has on there so it'll equalize the pressure so we know for sure um, that the fuel pressure is always right. Also I'm going to be putting in a new cluster uh, as well as I'm going to add in a uh, secondary relay because I'm gonna make a, a dual f a fuel pump setup so I'm gonna cut out uh, the whole factory setup let me see I got my pump somewhere around here uh, where is it at nope not on the clip uh, give me a minute somewhere over here I put it oh here we go so this is this is what the factory pump looks like all right, and it has this secondary little, uh, that little nipple right there that that pushes fuel to the other side um, to a siphon that uh, just pushes fuel back to the fuel pump area. So what I did is I put like an A and 8 and a 6 on top and then I made a T fitting that goes to the siphon that, um, that sends fuel, you know, back to where the fuel pump is. But long story short, um, I'm coming going into like a, a lean. I'm going lean right now with the car uh, when I get in like third gear. So, being that said, I was gonna do like you know figure out where I could put like a surge tank and all that other stuff. But I had a spare Walbro 450 laying around, and I was just thinking, man, like maybe I could figure out how to run some sort of uh, you know dual pump setup. So what I looked at, I look at the bottom of these, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out all this. I'm going to cut that completely out and the wall bro itself actually is pretty skinny like it, it, it sits where I know you could put two in there so I'm going to cut out the entire bottom I'm going to use like some some kind of fasteners zip ties or something to hold the fuel pumps a little separate from each other um, and I'm going to run it through the body and then have them you know sit down and in and now I have I have extra socks I even have a, a Y fitting somewhere over here. Let me get this. Um, it's in the back. So I have a Y fitting that we're gonna go ahead and hook up both the fuel pumps to. And we're gonna use that and then we're gonna run it to the AN8. And what I'm gonna try is because it's gonna be pushing and flowing so much fuel, I'm gonna try that through the return of the six, the AN6. I'm gonna have, uh, make fuel just flow through um, to that siphon, you know, that pushes the fuel back to the fuel pumps. So I'm gonna see how that works. I shouldn't run into starvation issues um, if everything goes fine. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. As well as I gotta figure out the wiring because I still have not got the all-wheel drive system to work. So I gotta go through a whole bunch of stuff. So cluster, oil leaks, wiring, fuel pump, um, Man, uh, even my AC's out. You know, I don't know how that happened, but so we're gonna go through the whole car again one more time and just get everything right and before we could eventually take it to the track and then test this thing out. So yeah, let's get into this. All right, so look at this old ground right here. This thing is beat. This thing is all sorts of mess up. Split. Let me see that. So, I'm gonna make another one. Measure out. And make it right here. So, what you're gonna need if you've never done nothing like this before, get yourself some uh, wire cutters. Um, ones like these, these will do because they can help you know splice the wire cut it you're gonna want to find the correct sizing so that you could you know split your wire get it nice and fresh like that and you'll put some uh, you'll put your uh, 
ends and electrical ends. We're gonna use these. But see, I don't like the the yellow on there. It pretty it makes it ugly. I don't want that sitting there anyway. So I'm gonna take these off, and then I'm gonna do um, heat shrink over them instead after I clamp these down. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this off first. Probably could melt it, or, or probably cut it. So I could do it. I'm gonna see if cutting it works. Got a razor blade somewhere around here in this mess. There we go. There we go, clean. Where's the next guy? There we go. Let's do it. We got our hands. We got our crimper. We want to put some heat shrink over this first, over the ends. So if you look good amount of space because it's the yellow one technically the black wire should, I should use like a blue but what I'm gonna do which kind of helps that is if you double you double up on the wire and then you won't have that issue you don't have to worry about nothing coming out so I'm just gonna double the end just a little bit because we need most of this black wire done. Let's do it. Let's just see. Oof. Green pigtail, where you at? Come here. Shut my key, man. Put this right in the way. It's alright. I don't know if I told you, but the whole reason why I'm changing this thing out is because mine started bugging out, and I don't think it's the wiring. Um, some of the wiring I did have to tamper with to, for the all-wheel drive system, which was back here, but I really don't think it's it. Um, I checked it and looked at it, and it doesn't look bad, so um, yeah. So whatever car this came off of had 124,000 miles, and I had 276,000 miles on mine. So, yeah. And what time is this? About five. Five should be all right. That looks pretty cool in there. I kind of like it. I ain't going to lie. It wasn't my thing, but it looks it looks pretty cool. I'm going to turn it, turn the key forward and see what it does. Let me get my key. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see if this is unplugged. I think that's. I think it is unplugged. My airbag looks looks straight. I can't turn it on because right now um, I, ha I have my injector, everything all unplugged because I'm gonna get my injectors cleaned and everything. But yeah, all this is. I mean, man, the LED looks so much better. Everything. I just need to get a new one of these because what happens? I originally changed this the blinker and what on the factory for this stock car it has buttons that allows to change everything up there so i'm gonna have to get a new one of those pretty soon so um yeah it looks like everything pretty good yes sir look at that thing what that thing is crispy So what do you think about that? See, I don't know how I feel. Like I, I've never 
Never liked the GLI one. Never liked it, to be honest. But, you know, it is what it is. It looks kind of cool, my dash. I don't know, though. We'll see what we're going to do. Might keep it, might not. All right, going to pull out the pump, and then we are going to go ahead and get all this assembled. All right, so got a whole bunch of stuff here. We got a 3 8 by 3 8 uh, wide connector. Um, we got, uh, what else? We got a bunch of different wires because we're going to make a relay, uh, a secondary relay. We're going to change out these. So these quick connectors, I love them, but the disadvantage, I mean, they're kind of exposed. And I got some other ones that cover each other so that, you know, not, not, no issues actually go down. So I'm going to change that. And this is what we're going to be working on. We are going to be pulling out all this old stuff see the way the way it is is i guess the r32 and the tt they have this nipple and i showed you already that it it comes off of the pump uh, which is right here it comes off the pump i don't know if you can see that well so right off the pump and then it sends to the uh like i said the pickup you know that pushes fuel back to the pump i already, I already explained this to y'all but just showing you the, the difference now someone on like one of the groups said this is one of the things they did they made a T and to where I don't like it because obviously you see that look how much hose it is it's a mess it's all over the place I could get smaller hoses but I think it's kind of dumb the way I have my fuel system ran is it's a AN8 um, all the way through and to the return is AN6 so and it flows all the way back I've tested it I primed it and I mean it put it pushes fuel back like pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on the return I'm gonna try it out see what happens uh, because again I don't like this setup I'm gonna put on the return the six and it's gonna go to that siphon it's gonna theoretically push the fuel uh, all the way through because especially that I'm doing a dual fuel pump my theory is that man that's I mean that's gonna be that much more pressure constantly pushing so that's gonna be that much more flow back so it should have no problem, any kind of fuel starvation or, no, or nothing. Um, I should have no problem getting fuel back to the pumps. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna cut out this bottom even more. Let me show you this. So this is the way I had to do it, you know, originally to get this for, uh, this is a 525, I believe, in there. But I'm gonna cut this out like all the way. So really, and even open up the top and everything. So really just the pumps will just kind of be just there. Um, because I really don't need all the body. I just need the pumps all the way down and in to make sure it's picking up fuel and the socks as well. So it's going to be a crazy little project. I'm going to uh, cut holes in the back and everything uh, to zip tie separate. Um, I had a suggestion that maybe should make sure they don't touch because if you notice, most dual pump kits, the, the wall bro or none of the pumps are actually like touching. So I don't know what could happen at all but I'm gonna just really make sure that we have this separate. So let's go ahead and try, oh, here you go. You can see that. See, that's the eight feed and that's the six return and it was just dropping right in the pump. So again, I'm gonna send it over and it's gonna be hooked up to this side now and then I'll fuel it. So let's get on it. basket will fall out and then I'm gonna just cut around the outside so we can put both pumps in as they should fit um, the width of it it's width one and then the second one should fit I'll try that. here it is yes sir so we're gonna cut out now this whole 
the base so that we can get both pumps in there. And it should fit fine. So made my markings where I'm gonna drill the holes. Here's how we're gonna run it. Put a little rubber piece in between to make sure, even if it did touch, like it shouldn't cancel out anything. And then again, I'm gonna zip tie it away from each other. All right, let's check out how these fit in there. top on okay guys so I decided to go about the pump situation a little bit different and here's what I'm basically doing so I drilled a hole uh, right there on that side and that's gonna run this whole washer and bolt setup I'm gonna use uh, nylon washers and with some e85 sealant to run it through and that's gonna be its second uh, basically for the second pump I'm gonna use so it could, uh, it could get power. And the whole reason why I'm doing that is because I was tying them in together and I was like, man, I have time that could burn something up because it's a little spade connector you know, at the top and I was like, I, I just don't wanna risk it. So I was like, I'll just go ahead, maybe drill a hole, make sure I seal it properly. And as I do that, I shouldn't have any issues. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see how this setup works. I mean, it looks really weird, but this is the way in which we had to do, I had to do it. So, um, and then this is my return that's gonna go, like I explained earlier, uh, to push fuel back to the other side. So, we'll see, let's try this thing out. By no means pretty but here it is the sealer dripped a lot but whatever um, so what I'm gonna do as you see I'm gonna put the little fitting right there clamp it down with another one of these little nuts and that's gonna be solid and then what I'm gonna do is run a wire to and use one of my quick disconnect fittings at the other end so that this part if I ever need to move it could come in and out real easy and I won't have any issues yeah Okay, here it is. Not the prettiest at all, but everything's in there. Wires are in as best as we can get them. Here's my new setup. Here's where the power is going to be for that. Um, and then using the old setup up here with clips. It's all funky, but this is going to be definitely better than getting a surge tank because I had this stuff laying around. It's going to be a lot cheaper. And then I'll have to try to fit it in no special place. Everything is where it's got to be. And I just got to tighten everything down to make sure everything is superb. Put it in. And then whenever my injectors come back, because I got them out right now. You see my fuel rail just sitting right here. Uh, whenever that comes back, then we could go ahead and test it. Do a hit and see how everything is. So might have just found another reason why uh, I was leaning out. So here it is burnt up. I think that's 87 
and I was wondering like I was very surprised that my pump wasn't working but nevertheless it's all right we're gonna have that much more fuel now the double fuel pump will work and yeah, is what it is so might have done the work for no reason but at the same time now I know because I'm gonna do all this over a hundred percent I'm not gonna have an issue with fuel so it is what it is all right so all the fuel pump stuff is done uh, the wires are done and ran for the twin relays have them sitting over there I had to make us a, a, a extra fuse like setup using two wires that's why this one looks really terrible versus like this and I have it running up there so this is hidden so when the chair goes on you won't see that in the trunk at all and let me show you so this would be the view you know from the back looking looking pretty clean so basically once the injectors get back then I'll be able to prime the pump you know and the pumps really now and just see how everything works um, hopefully there's nothing crazy but should work out pretty fine which double checked over everything and uh, made sure everything is ran correctly and i'm pretty sure we're gonna have a nice new setup uh and then the injectors um will be at tip top notch now i've never cleaned them before um they've always i, I i've ran between 93 and 80, 85 so um there could have been some debris in there as well as i had um the filters fell off of the uh the the, the pumps well, the pump you know it was a single pump at the time so being that the filter fell off the pump long story short when i took the injectors off because i was going to clean them i looked inside the fuel rail and in the fuel rail i seen a little bit of debris so pretty much a thousand percent that the injectors weren't at you know their tip top shape as well but now they'll be at the best the car should be at its best so i shouldn't have any kind of issues of uh sending and making enough uh fuel pressure um, so that the injectors can perform at its you know best and then we can make some power I'd hope to make you know upper 500 maybe even 600 horsepower. That'd be awesome um, the 1050s they can Do it, but I don't know if the duty cycle is gonna be too high if it's gonna be um, Above 80 or not, but if it's within the 80% range, they should be fine So we'll see my tuner did say it's possible, but I mean everything has to be on uh, you know 100% so We'll test it out, we'll test it out. So for now I'm gonna put the seats back in and get everything going and not gonna plug in the other part of the fuel pump until the injectors are back because I gotta open lines and I don't need fuel everywhere. All right guys, that is a wrap. I appreciate y'all, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe and be ready. We got another video dropping pretty soon. I appreciate y'all, I'll catch y'all next time.